I was working that day and, and I got a phone call from Wagga to say that Ted Glanville had gone home and found blood all over his wife. So I put on the lights and siren and all that stuff and took off. Forget sunshine and cacti, these 10 Arizona towns are shrouded in secrets, racked by unsolved crimes, and rumored to be gateways to something unspeakable. From unsolved crimes to a man who faced the ultimate sentence for terrorizing a town, this list truly does have it all. Starting off today, we are heading over to Bumblebee, Arizona. Bumblebee is officially one of the cutest sounding towns with one of the most disturbing stories. This story is one of love that ends in the most horrifying way. In late October 2003, the mysterious and chilling killing of Brandon Roomba and his girlfriend Lisa Gieri shook the quiet backdrop of Arizona's vast desert. The young couple had set out for a romantic camping trip armed with a new camera to capture the essence of their adventure under the starlit sky. Their destination was a secluded spot near Bumblebee Road, just north of Phoenix, where they planned to spend the weekend away from the bustling city life to celebrate their first anniversary. But what was meant to be a peaceful getaway turned sinister when they never returned. Days later, both Brandon and Lisa were found with their lives taken, still in their sleeping bags. Despite a flurry of investigative efforts, including a very mysterious photograph retrieved from their camera, depicting what looked like an eerie nighttime scene, the case remains cold. The chilling question of who could have done this and why still haunts detectives to this day. Next on our list, we are heading over to Pine Top Lakeside. Pine Top Lakeside is a lovely little mountain town that hides an absolutely gruesome story from 2008. Chad Coker, a man with a very turbulent past marred by DV and substance abuse, committed a horrific crime that shattered the peace of this seemingly ordinary evening. It all began when William Edward Westover, freshly acquainted with Coker's ex-wife, ventured out on a first date that would tragically be his last. As the night progressed, Coker, fueled by jealousy and rage and probably some of those substances, tracked down the couple after they had cautiously avoided him earlier at a local spot. The nightmare escalated when Coker forcefully barged into his ex-wife's apartment late at night. With a cold determination, he attacked Westover with a ferocity that ended in a horrifying number of wounds. Amid the chaos, Coker's ex-wife, while desperately fighting for her own life and that of Westover, managed to call 911, a decision that likely spared her from a similar fate. Police arrived swiftly only to find a scene straight out of a horror film. Coker was apprehended while clutching a weapon moments after committing the very dreadful act. Next, we're heading over to Vulture City. Vulture City is the kind of place where you start to wonder what those old buildings could say if they could talk, and some people swear they hear whispers anyway. Nestled in the rugged landscapes of Arizona, Vulture City whispers tales of its ruckus past, drawing the curious and the brave to its deserted streets. Founded during the feverish rush of the 1800s gold boom, this now abandoned town once thrummed with the dreams and greed of fortune seekers. At its peak, Vulture City buzzed with miners, but it wasn't just the glitter of gold that marked its history. It was also scarred by a dark underbelly of violence and lawlessness. Stories of killing and betrayal were as common as the dust on its streets. At the heart of the town stands a grim sentinel, the huge ironwood tree. Local legend claims that this tree served a chilling purpose as the town's hanging tree, where numerous outlaws allegedly swung from its gnarled branches, their lives cut short by frontier justice. Today, some say that the spirits of those ill-fated souls linger, manifesting as shadowy figures that roam near the tree at night. Next up today, we are talking about the Superstition Mountains and the Lost Dutchman's Gold Mine. Imagine a legendary gold mine that people have risked their lives in pursuit of, and that is the Lost Dutchman's Gold Mine. This place is nestled within the rugged expanse of the Superstition Mountains in Arizona, of course, which if you've been a viewer of this channel for a while, you will know all about. The Superstition Mountains are said to be one of the most cursed and strange locations in all of the United States. 
United States. According to legend, this elusive mine was discovered by Jacob Waltz, a German immigrant in the 19th century who took the secret of its location to his grave. Known colloquially as the Dutchman, a nod to the American mispronunciation of Deutsch meaning German, Waltz's hidden treasure has sparked the imaginations of many. Over the years, the story of this fabled mine has been told and retold, outstripping even the famous tales of Captain Kidd's treasure and California's lost peg leg mine in popularity. Every year, approximately 9,000 people are lured by the promise of gold, venturing into the wilderness to uncover its secrets. Tragically, this quest has not been without cost. In one of the more recent and somber chapters of this saga, Jesse Capen from Denver, obsessed with finding the mine, vanished in 2009 while searching in the Tonto National Forest. His remains were tragically recovered three years later in a remote crevice. The story of the lost Dutchman's mine wrapped in danger and allure continues to be a poignant reminder of the powerful draw of the unknown. Moving on today, we are heading over to Florence, Arizona. Florence looks like a lovely little town with some of the richest history in the entire county, but it holds the tale of a chilling crime with a horrifying backstory. Let's take it back to January 1984, when Robert Mormon was serving a nine year to life sentence in Florence for for kidnapping when an eerie twist of events unfolded during a three-day furlough. His adoptive mother, Roberta, visited him staying at the quaint Blue Mist Motel. On Friday the 13th, a date synonymous with bad luck, Mormon purchased knives and food, setting a very sinister scene. His mother, supposedly ill, became the subject of whispered concerns among locals as Mormon weaved a web of deceit, claiming she had left the motel while her belongings suggested otherwise. As the day progressed, Mormon's desperate attempts to dispose of suspiciously described garbage bags raised alarms. The local pizza parlor owner, sensing something amiss, tipped off the police. Under the guise of concern, Mormon misled the authorities about his mother's whereabouts. Meanwhile, he sought help from a prison lieutenant to dispose of what he called dog bones, which alarmingly turned out to be human remains. The truth on unraveled very quickly, leading to Mormon's arrest and a trial that peeled back the layers of a disturbed mind and a gruesome crime. Despite claims of a possible motive that drove him to violence, the jury found him guilty, unswayed by his insanity defense. On February 29th, 2012, justice echoed through the halls of the prison as Mormon faced execution, closing a very dark chapter rooted in betrayal and a mother's tragic visit to a sleepy motel in Florence. Next up, we are talking about Phoenix, Arizona, more specifically Baseline Road. Okay, before you come at me, I know that Phoenix is not a small town, and I am not trying to pretend that it is. But when I heard about these horrifying crimes of this man known as the Baseline Killer, I truly had no choice but to tell you all about it. Mark Gudo, known as the Baseline Killer, is a figure straight out of a grim crime thriller. Between August 2005 and June 2006, Phoenix was his chilling playground where he committed a horrifying series of crimes that included taking the lives of nine people as well as numerous other disgusting and disturbing crimes that I will spare you the details of. This period in Phoenix was marked by a cloud of fear and mystery as Goudot operated under the radar, choosing his victims at random, which only added to the city's panic. His moniker came from the baseline road in Phoenix where many of his early attacks occurred. What makes his spree particularly disturbing is the brazenness and brutality of his crimes, coupled with his ability to evade capture for almost a year. His arrest didn't just bring relief, it ended a very dark chapter in Phoenix's history, turning him from a mysterious figure into a notorious convict. Next on our list, we are heading over to Tombstone, Arizona. Tombstone just already sounds like a creepy place, and this place isn't just any old wild west town, it's the poster child for cowboy showdowns and spooky tales. Established in 1879, this town quickly earned a reputation as the real deal frontier town, complete with saloon brawls, notorious outlaws, and the infamous gunfight at the OK Corral. But it's not just the bull 
bullets and bravado that keep people talking. Tombstone's also known for its very eerie encounters. Places like the Birdcage Theater, once a rollicking entertainment hub, now host a different kind of crowd. Ghostly figures of cowboys and saloon girls that some say never left. Mysterious voices, sudden chills, and phantom figures peering from old windows make it easy to believe that in Tombstone, some residents might have just stuck around forever. This blend of gritty history and unresolved mystery makes Tombstone a town too tough to die and possibly too spirited to ever be forgotten. Next up, we are heading over to Bisbee. They say that beneath Bisbee's streets, old mining tunnels twist and turn, and some believe that they lead not just to forgotten gold, but to something far darker and stranger like, say, the underworld. Back in its heyday, Bisbee was a bustling mining town, vibrant with the clang of picks and the hustle of miners digging deep into the earth. Today, it stands as a relic of the past, but beneath its charming streets lies a sprawling labyrinth of old mine tunnels, a veritable underground city left over from its mining boom. The real intrigue, however, starts with the local legends that have seeped into the town's identity as much as the mines themselves. There are whispers among the locals about mysterious portals hidden within these tunnels, gateways that lead to another dimension, or even more thrillingly, to the underworld itself. Tales of strange disappearances and eerie, unexplained encounters beneath the surface lend an air of mystery that makes Bisbee a place where history feels alive and the borders between the unknown and the known blur intriguingly. Next on our list, we are heading over to Goldfield ghost town. In Goldfield, it's not just the creaky old buildings and the dusty streets that give you chills. Whispers say the ghosts of gold-hungry miners still linger, their restless spirits echoing through the abandoned town. Taking it back in time, Goldfield was the epitome of a boom town, thriving with miners and merchants drawn by the lure of gold. However, like many such towns, its fortunes dwindled when the gold veins ran dry, leaving behind empty buildings and silent streets. But Goldfield did not stay silent for long. Reimagined as a tourist attraction, it offers a peek into a past filled with both prosperity and hardship. Wander through its recreated streets and you might feel the echoes of the past underfoot. Visitors report sightings and sensations that suggest the old residents, particularly a miner known as George, might still be hanging around, perhaps not ready to leave the excitement of the gold rush behind. Mind. Truly taking the meaning of ghost town to a whole new level with that one, George. Thanks so much. And finally on our list today, we are heading over to Jerome. Jerome, Arizona isn't just your run-of-the-mill ghost town. It's a place brimming with historical charm and eerie tales that attract the curious from far and wide. Back in its heyday, Jerome was a bustling hub for copper mining, thriving with energy and ambition. However, as the mines closed in the 1950s, the town's vibe vibrant pulse slowed dramatically, leaving it teetering on the edge of becoming another forgotten relic of the American West. But Jerome refused to fade into oblivion. Instead, it reinvented itself, capitalizing on its spooky reputation to draw in tourists. The centerpiece of Jerome's ghostly allure is the Jerome Grand Hotel, once a hospital where thousands of miners were treated. It's crazy to turn an old hospital into a hotel. Like, you're just asking for ghosts. Today, it's reputed to be one of the most haunted buildings in the entire state, with guests reporting sightings of spectral patients roaming its halls, ghostly children playing tricks, and eerie, unexplained noises echoing through the night. The entire town, it seems, is a stage for the supernatural, with many of its buildings and businesses boasting their own chilling stories of the paranormal. This rich blend of history and mysterious occurrences make Jerome a uniquely captivating destination for those fascinated by the past and also the paranormal. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I will see you again soon. Goodbye.